Okay, I want to do a little video <clears throat> about piston orientation and rod orientation and cylinder numbering. If this was a General Motors engine, um, this rod right here, this cylinder, would be here. Okay, it would be offset. The, the whole block is offset, so we got uh, uh, the left bank or the driver's side bank is right here. General Motors has their cylinders offset forward on the driver's side. See how this is offset? This is a Ford motor. We have an offset forward on the passenger side, not the driver's side. So just imagine in your mind that everything is flipped, okay? And we're dealing with the General Motors engine, so our offset is here. General Motors, the reason you have 1357 on your driver's side is because you just go right down the line on the crankshaft. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is your General Motors, Mopar, just about everybody else on the planet does that. And I don't know if every engine General Motors Mopar is offset the opposite way from just this engine, per se. Just just saying that, okay? This is a Ford engine. Offset is over here on the passenger side, and that's the way Ford numbered their cylinders is a one, two, three, four, and then they come back up here, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know why they did that. I cannot find any explanation if you know post it because you know I've always been curious about why they did that but General Motors and, and Mopar and everybody else is very basic and very easy to explain that they were looking at the crank when they numbered their cylinders they went from the front of the engine to the back of the engine that way when you are standing there look at the engine you've got one bank on the right which is 1357 and the bank on the left is 2468 but again totally different engine uh, forward engine, numbered differently, and when you when you put these together, and you get your aftermarket <coughs> rods, they don't come with any numbers or stamping. So I always stamp right there along the side. It doesn't matter which side you do it on. Some people prefer to do it on the lock side. I prefer to do it on the side that's facing towards the outside of the engine because it's just easier to deal with. Now, not only do you want to stamp here, so this one's two, this one is six, and you see this one's got two rows stamped pretty much right next to each other on the same side of the rod and the journal cap. And then on the journal cap, I put six hash marks toward the front of the engine. So there's no way to screw it up. No way to screw it up unless you take that son of a gun out and put it into a different engine. Now, I also want to explain uh, aftermarket crankshafts. You see that bevel on the edge right there that bevel so you have to have H bearings to do this that means H bearings they take that lock and that lock is offset to account for that little flange on the opposite side of the lock so that when you go down in there you have room for that aftermarket crankshaft has the beveled edge on it that's why you use H bearings on aftermarket crankshafts the mains are the same way. They'll have that bevel on both sides. I'd take a main cap off and show you, but that bevel's there, and you have to have H bearings on these. And the bevel might just be on one side. I don't know. I'd have to take the journal off. I'm not going to go that deep into it. But just make sure that when you put your pistons on, that your orientation of your valve reliefs are facing the right direction. They have to face, the valve release have to face in toward the intake manifold. If you have a dome, the dome is on the outside. And Chevrolet, General Motors, whatever, they have different orientations on the valves because they have an intake valve. Just imagine your head's just right out here. Your exhaust valve is here for this cylinder, and your exhaust valve is here for this cylinder. So the exhaust valves butt up against one another. They give you four lefts and four rights with a General Motors engine when you're using dome pistons or you have valve reliefs that are not identical. Some valve reliefs uh, are, are just identical cuts in the pistons. 
but when you're dealing with high performance and you want to use a dome, you have to pay close attention to where your dome is at and where your valve reliefs are at on your pistons. The Ford, they always have like the intake is first and exhaust is second and so on down the line on and then both sides, this side's just reversed because you can flip the heads and whatever you want to do. And you just have to make sure that when you're dealing with the General Motors, you have those offsets faced properly, the dome faced properly, and it's orientated on the rod properly because if you flip this rod around, that bearing is going to be riding over here on that bevel and it, you won't be able to turn the engine over and then you have to take everything back apart again and, and do it all over. I hope this helps. Post if you have any questions.